Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got something different for you. A way to run Kaylee Linux without the usual complications. That's right, no dual boot, no VMware, no virtual box, no messy partitions or boot menus, just Kaylee Linux running natively inside Windows. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Kaylee Linux using a powerful method called the Windows Subsystem for Linux, or WSL for short. WSL2 requires Windows 10, build 18362 or later, or Windows 11. This method is light, fast, and perfect for penetration testing, ethical hacking, or simply exploring Kali, all from your Windows environment. No reboots, no external tools, just a few commands and you're in. Let's dive right in. Before we begin, you need to make sure virtualization is enabled in your BIOS or UEFI settings. Here's how to check. Right-click on the taskbar and open Task Manager. Go to the Performance tab and click on CPU. On the bottom right, look for a line that says Virtualization. If it says Enabled, you're good to go. If it says Disabled, you'll need to restart your PC, enter the BIOS or UEFI, and enable virtualization manually. Next, let's enable the required features for WSL. Go to Start Menu, type Turn Windows Feature On and Off. Over here, scroll down and check option of Virtual Machine Platform and Windows Subsystem for Linux. Then click OK. Once that's done, click Restart button. After restarting your computer, we're now ready to install WSL, the Windows subsystem for Linux. To begin, open the Start menu and type Windows PowerShell. Click on it to open. If you're using Windows 11, you can also open PowerShell from the desktop. First, let's update WSL, or install it if it isn't already present. Type the following command. This command will automatically install or update WSL to the latest version. Once that's done, check your installed version by typing the command. Now let's take a look at the Linux distributions available online for WSL. Type this command. You'll see a list of different Linux distributions you can install, including some popular ones like Ubuntu, Debian, Fedora, Arch, and Kali Linux. To install Kali Linux, use this command. The installation is now in progress. This process may take some time, so please be patient. Once the installation is complete, it's time to launch Kaylee Linux. To do that, type the following command. After launching Kaylee Linux for the first time, you'll need to set up your username and password. I'll use Fixbyte as the username in this example. Next, choose a strong password and then confirm it. Once that's done, your username and password will be successfully configured and the Kali Linux terminal will be fully launched. To learn more about using the Windows subsystem for Linux, you can consult the official documentation. Now, let's check the version of Kali Linux installed on your system. Type the following command. This will display details about your Kali Linux version. In this case, we can see it's the latest release. Go ahead and close this session for now. Next, let's go to the Start menu and search for Kali Linux. Click on the Kali Linux icon to open a new terminal session. 
Now, let's set Kali Linux as the default WSL distribution. Type the command. From now on, you'll be able to launch Kali Linux by simply typing WSL. Before we begin using it, let's make sure it's fully up to date. Type the following command, sudo apt update. Then enter your password when prompted and press enter. The update process may take a few minutes, so please be patient. Now, let's explore how to install tools in Kali Linux on WSL. As you can see, I tried typing John. However, the tool is not installed by default. That's because Kali Linux for WSL comes with a minimal installation. This means you'll need to install the tools you need manually. Let me show you how to do that. To install any tool, use the command sudo apt install tool name. In our case, type sudo apt install john. Then press Y when prompted to confirm the installation. Now, John the Ripper is successfully installed. Let's try installing another tool, this time the Chromium browser. Type the following command, sudo apt install Chromium. Once the installation is complete, let's go to the Start menu and check for the Chromium browser. As you can see, Chromium is now available in the Start menu. You can pin it to the taskbar or keep it in the Start menu for quick access. Now go ahead and launch Chromium. And just like that, we've successfully installed and launched a Kali Linux tool inside Windows OS using WSL. Now let's move on to the final step. In this step, I'll show you how to install the Graphical User Interface, or GUI, for Kali Linux. The GUI will be launched when the Kex server is installed and running. Now, let's install the Kex server which enables the graphical user interface for Kali Linux on WSL. To begin, type the following command. sudo apt install Kali WinKex. Enter your Kali Linux password when prompted. The installation process may take some time, so please be patient. Once the installation is complete, we're ready to launch the Kex server. Type the command on your screen to start it. You'll be asked to create a password for the Kex session. Make sure it's at least eight characters long and retype it to confirm. Next, enter your Kali Linux user password when prompted. That's it. The graphical user interface for Kali Linux has now been successfully installed and launched using Kex. You can now use the GUI-based terminal and access Kali tools in a more user-friendly way. Press F8 to bring up the control menu. From here, you can minimize the screen and easily switch between Windows and Kali Linux environments. To disconnect the Kex server, simply press F8 again and select the Disconnect option. If you want to stop the Kex server entirely from the terminal, type the following command, kex-stop. And with that, you've completed the setup of a full Kali Linux GUI experience on Windows using WSL. And that's it. Kali Linux is now fully installed on your Windows PC using WSL 2. You can start using powerful Linux tools directly inside Windows. No dual boot or VM required. If this tutorial helped you out, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more tech guides. Got questions or ran into issues? Drop a comment below 
and I'll help you out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.